the holy prophet of the Muslim religion? Hey guys, how's it going? Hello, Muhammad. We've read all about you in the Quran. I'm here to investigate a matter. Whoa. No other word for this, but whoa. Hundred thousand? That's a weird feeling. I mean, I have like anxiety about my age and I'm having an anxiety attack right now. I might have to call my therapist back. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk and I'm here to talk to you about South Park, or more specifically, their biggest controversy. One that I cannot put on a top 10 list. It is depicting an image of the Muslim prophet Muhammad. And I have no fear that I shall get blown up because that's a stupid stereotype. Seriously, why did I even say that? To explain myself, about a year back I made a video about South Park and their link with Christianity. And in that video I made a joke about how I couldn't talk about Muhammad because I might get blown up. And a lot of people did not like that. I was just referencing a past controversy. I meant nothing bad by it and I think it was because some of you told me that you wanted me to go like deeper. So I tried. I mean that was back when I was afraid that if I just said the word Scientology in my chef video that Scientology would go after me and my family. Until all of you said it was okay. But it was still wrong to joke about or at least I wish I had Catherine back then to make it more clear I was joking. For that and for the fact it took me so long to get around to making this video. I mean it's been almost a year. I give y'all permission to refer to me as a furry in the comments. Even if that is 100,000% not true. I am not a furry. Even if I rarely shave and I like fish and I am lactose intolerant. Now South Park is no stranger to controversy. In fact, I have a PoochieCon panel coming up all about them. It'll be in Teaneck during the first weekend in March. But their biggest and their most infamous involves the prophet Muhammad. I spent a while doing research and learning all I could, but a lot of other bigger videos, plans in my life, all that jazz, took up time that could have been better used for this video. To put it out there, I will try to explain what happened to the best of my ability. If I get something wrong, please tell me down below. I do encourage you guys to do your own research as I'm not trying to peddle any kind of misinformation or Cherokee hair tampons. Oh my god. Those have like no applicator and probably no string. I'm just telling you what I managed to find. So let's discuss. Now what I found interesting is that there's apparently nothing in the Quran about not being able to draw or depict religious figures like Allah or Muhammad. And believe it or not, this rule is not limited to them. It typically also expands into living things like humans or animals. The idea is that by drawing them, you're encouraging idolatry. Idolatry? One of those two? Or worship of false idols, which is forbidden by most religions. As a result, historically, much Muslim art focused on various patterns and calligraphy. But this is also kind of a myth. In fact, Muhammad was depicted in Muslim art for a long, long time. At worst, they wouldn't depict his face. And to be fair, this ban on depicting figures isn't limited to Islam. Both Christianity and Judaism for a long time also had rules that you couldn't depict certain religious figures or images. With Christianity, for example, you could only show crosses. Which I guess is why the crucifix became so commonplace. Deuteronomy 5.8 even said, You shall not make for yourself a carved image, or any likeness of anything that is heaven above, or that is on earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind, or an image of any anything in the heavens, or on the earth, or in the sea. The reason I say this is because I want to dispel a few myths about the image of Muhammad. Like that just by showing an image will cause any Muslim to automatically load a gun and wish death on America. And to also introduce the idea of double standards and the history behind them. Plus, I did a lot of research and I want to show my work and also how all-encompassing this topic can be. And why we can never show an image of Muhammad. No, Muslims can't show an image of Muhammad. Kyle, you're not being very sensitive.
Yeah, Ka. Something interesting I found was, is kind of like abortion or gay marriage, this isn't an issue that all Muslims agree with. Apparently, while most Sunni Muslims believe that you cannot depict Muhammad, many Shia Muslims have no problem with it. Unfortunately, as many extremist Muslims are of the Sunni variety, although not all of them, I'm not trying to generalize, this makes people believe that all Muslims universally believe that drawing Muhammad is as bad as, say, killing a baby or pushing an old lady into oncoming traffic. Now, history lesson aside, how does this relate to South Park? Well, let's start off with the episode Super Best Friends. David Blaine has started his own cult of Blaintologists, which is basically Scientology. David Blaine is much more than a magician. He's a scholar, a visionary. A leader. Oh, I've got a trick for you to learn. I can show you how to make your true self appear. I guess they didn't want to talk about it back then? I don't know. Of course, David Blaine isn't some great prophet. He's a liar. And he ain't coming to dinner. Okay, now hold this card up to the crowd. Was that the card you picked? No, I'm sorry. I picked the four of hearts. Four of hearts? Really? Look again. So he starts a cult, where you shave your head and dress in white, and tell people of the holy miracles of David Blaine. Only, the IRS refuses his request for the church to get tax-exempt status. To force the issue, David Blaine forces his followers to march on the Capitol. What? If he gets tax-exempt status, then he'll become a real religion. He would become unstoppable. I love Frick. I love brick. And as a symbol of their devotion to the cause, they will drown themselves in the reflecting pool, which is 18 to 30 inches deep. However, the uh, reflecting pool is a little more shallow than we originally thought. Next! That's actually kind of surprising to me that it's not like a swimming pool or something. I mean, come on, there's 7 million gallons of water right there. What better way to bring unity to people and represent the idea of freedom than a giant swimming pool? Did you not read about the water gardens in Game of Thrones? To stop the mass deaths, the super best friends are called an organization of the leaders of many religions who band together to save the day. Their members include Jesus Christ, Joseph Smith, Seaman, Krishna, Lao Tzu, Buddha, and Muhammad. Stanley, I want you to meet some of the super best friends. Buddha, with the powers of invisibility. Muhammad, the Muslim prophet with the powers of flame. All right, here it is. An image of Muhammad. Soak it in. What I like is that there's nothing bad about him. He looks like an average man. To some degree, that's bad, because you probably wouldn't know who he's supposed to be unless I told you. Right, there is, uh, is with, say, to Jesus or Buddha. It's how Wait they're stereotypically presented. David Even if Jesus was not white, nor did he have long hair, but I don't think really any adaptation makes that point. But to another degree, I think this is also pretty good. Look at what they did to Sally Struthers, or Paris Hilton, or Russell Crowe, or Rob Reina. They could have made him look a lot worse, but they don't make any jokes about him or his religion or anything like that. It's pretty positive. He's just a normal superhero who has fire powers, and he saves the day and cares about people. So you mean to tell me that even though people fight and argue over different religions, you guys are all actually friends? More than friends, young boy. We are super best friends. Despite what you might think, there was no controversy about this episode when it first premiered. It just flew under the radar. Plus, considering the whole talk of false idols, well, Muhammad did smash a false one, that being David Blaine. We gotta stop that oversized Abraham Lincoln, Muhammad. Scott. So, there's also that. On top of that, they added Muhammad to the opening credits, and nobody at any point complained. Or maybe they didn't notice. And he was just out in the open where everyone could see him and nobody got bombed? No, dude, it was totally fine. Muhammad showed up and there was no violence at all. 
Well, a giant John Wilkes Booth shot Abraham Lincoln. For reference, this episode aired on July 4, 2001, between Cripple Fight and Scott Tennerman Must Die. And it wasn't until 2005, like four years later, that this episode became controversial. Let's see why. In April of 2006, the infamous two-parter, Cartoon Wars, aired. And to be fair, this one also wasn't as controversial back then. It just got controversial when HBO Max acquired South Park streaming rights, and I guess as a precaution, ban the episodes. And Comedy Central itself also hasn't aired them in recent years. Neither has Paramount Plus. Cowards. Hulu let it slide. But while you might remember it for how it was two episodes, 22 minutes each of Trey Parker explaining why he doesn't like Family Guy, you might not know it was actually based on real life events. Heck, I had no clue it was based on real life events until I had to do research for it. I thought it was like Scientology where they just picked a topic at random. Okay, in 2005, the Danish newspaper, I'm gonna try to say this the best I can, Jylands Posten, which translates to the Morning Newspaper or the Jutland Post, released 12 cartoons by various Danish artists of the Prophet Muhammad, which upset many Muslims in Denmark and in the Middle East. You see, my father worked for a newspaper in my native country of Denmark. His newspaper showed an image of Muhammad and two days later, terrorists bombed his building. Well, I guess upset is kind of an understatement. It caused the diplomats of Saudi Arabia, Syria, and Libya to withdraw from Denmark. Many boycotts of Danish products, and in Central Africa, Majuri, and Nigeria, there were riots which equated to the destruction of a dozen churches, 15 deaths, and a temporary curfew. Yeah. But to be fair, one of these cartoons had Muhammad with a bomb in his turban, so I guess maybe it's a little understandable why they were so upset. The newspaper apologized, but they said they were simply using their right to free speech. Cartoon Wars explores this idea, and how hypersensitive the topic becomes, to the point where simply drawing a stick figure and labeling it Muhammad will get you killed. Stanley, Muhammad is sacred to the Muslim people. Ever since those cartoons in Denmark, the rules have changed. Nobody shows an image of Muhammad anymore. Which cartoon is it? Family Guy! Aww. By the time the episode came out, Family Guy was resurrected from cancellation, thanks to high reruns on Adult Swim and good DVD sales. And it became the cultural icon we know it as today. In South Park, it's a show that everybody has an opinion on. Kyle loves it, but Cartman hates it. When I make jokes, they are inherent to a story. Deep, situational, and emotional jokes based on what is relevant and has a point. Not just one random interchangeable joke after another! Cartman, your Trey Parker is showing. To be fair, I guess I should give my opinion, especially since I've started reviewing Family Guy in recent months. Despite the criticism I make about the show, I don't outright hate it. I used to secret watch it as a kid. I got in trouble all the time with my grandma just for watching it until I got to high school and suddenly it was no big deal. I don't even mind if they don't make a point about anything or have a definite message like Sal Park does because being funny is fine on its own merits. I mean, look at American Dad. Even the cutaways? Well, you know Beavis and Budhead did something similar with the music videos. I just hate how, unlike say King of the Hill or American Dad, they try to make a point without doing research like they did with Ida or Brenda or heck even with Meg or how they over explain the joke before it happens like we're too stupid to get it or how they tend to over rely on cutaways because especially in the newer seasons they tend to be the funniest part of a horrible episode. However, in the world of South Park, nobody likes that they're going to show Muhammad. Just the idea causes everybody to board up and wait to see if anything will happen in the morning. Only, nothing happens because Fox censored the show at the last minute. You mean like the time you had tea with Muhammad, the prophet of the Muslim faith? Come on, Muhammad, let's get some tea. Try my Mr. T. Again, much like Super Best Friends, the image they wanted to show was not anything offensive. It's literally just Muhammad doing something mundane, which for Family Guy is actually pretty odd. But it's enough to lead to people sticking their heads in the sand with a straw. That way they can't be blamed. Hello? 
Excuse me, I need to get to Los Angeles. Hey! Oh my god, that terrifies me. I have a fear of getting buried alive. I think there was a movie with Ryan Reynolds where he got buried alive. Oh my god. If you're not a fan of that, you could also get Muslim sensitivity training. There's sand in your eyes and probably in the crack. <laughs> and then some cartoon comes along from a country where people are getting laid. Well, you know what? I'd be pretty pissed off too. Mm, at least it's slightly better than what she said about evolution. As it turns out, the Family Guy episode was a two-parter. And they're gonna air the next part and an uncensored image of Muhammad during the next week. Oh, so I guess almost like South Park then, eh? Kyle and Cartman have to race to Hollywood. Cartman to get the episode, and therefore Family Guy pulled forever, and Kyle because free speech and stuff like that. Don't you ever, ever compare me to Family Guy. You hear me, Kyle? Compare me to Family Guy again, and so help me, I will kill you where you stand. Now, let's see what happened when the episode aired. Well, I guess because Family Guy was chosen as the show they decided to mock, that was all anybody seemed to have noticed. Seb MacFarlane wasn't ashamed by the episode. He said, quote, it's funny and accurate. Granted, there were a couple of times he thought about making a joke or a jab, but he never did because he thought it was in poor taste. And he said that he does heavily respect South Park, which considering how back then, he would climb up on his soapbox if you even so much as said you did not like the show, especially to trans people after Quagmire's dad aired. I think that was very big of him. Even the crews of The Simpsons and King of the Hill sent message of congratulations to the crew with Mac Groening himself sending flowers. But to be fair, Seth MacFarlane is friends with Matt Groening. I assume maybe Matt Groening is friends with Trey and Matt, and Mike Judge is friends with Matt and Trey. Even guest starring on South Park a few times. Plus, he's also friends with Seth, which is why he has let his characters be used on Family Guy. So I think most of what they were doing was joking and friendly. Wait, why am I not talking about Muhammad here? Well, don't you see? It wasn't a big deal to most anybody. Matt and Trey were not in any actual danger. True, maybe it's because they were simply talking about controversy, not showing it, but you think that considering the double standard, something might have happened. But my main critique of the episode is that they never talk about the double standard with the Danish newspaper, which many people have pointed out. In 2003, a few years prior to the infamous publication, the newspaper refused a cartoon which featured Jesus in a manner similar to how they portrayed Muhammad. And to make it more ironic, the editor who greenlit the Muhammad piece rejected the Jesus piece, which many called hypocritical. Maybe they could have made more of a point about that, especially since both shows feature Jesus Christ. Although Jesus wouldn't become a staple of Family Guy until 2008. Granted, they do make fun of the Jesus Muhammad double standard during the ending of part two, but I feel like this little tidbit of information would have been good to point out. Like perhaps the newspaper made a good point about the double standard when it came to free speech, but at the same time, they don't have clean hands. While part one did not get any controversy, the production of part two did lead to some oversight from Comedy Central. What you need to know is just like how Family Guy was portraying it, Muhammad was not meant to be anything serious. Just a quick version of him standing there, menacingly. Nah, I'm kidding. He would just be standing there, normally. However, the network was now scared, mostly because their parent company, Viacom, was. Yes, Comedy Central is owned by Viacom, meaning that Eric is a cousin to SpongeBob. The scene of Kyle going back and forth with the Fox Network president, who is named Doug, well, that's based on talks that Matt and Trey had with Comedy Central's then president, Doug Herzog. Wow, that's clever. People can get hurt. That's how terrorism works. But if you give in to that, Doug, you're allowing terrorism to work. If you don't show Muhammad, then you've made a distinction between what is okay to poke fun at and what isn't. Either it's all okay or none of it is. Dre Parker responded to the situation regarding cartoon wars by saying, that's what we said to them was, 
this is South Park, and we rip on absolutely everybody in really horrible, terrible ways. And if you're saying that this is the one thing we can't do besides Tom Cruise because they're threatening violence, well then, I guess that's what everyone should do. Then if the Catholics don't want us ripping on Jesus anymore, they should just threaten you with violence and they'll get their way. That's why it is such a slippery slope and such a dangerous path to go down. Meanwhile, Doug himself commented, I don't feel unlike Matt and Trey to a certain degree. You feel bad, but it's a big judgment call made on behalf of, as Matt said, a big media company. The ramifications are Matt and Trey being pissed at you and Matt calling you a coward in daily variety. But you know, it's just a tough situation. Did we overreact? For sure. And I think history will probably show that, we hope. We'd like to think, and in a perfect world, we would have liked to have had done it. It was a judgment call, one of the very few, although there seemed to have been a lot over the last months. Matt and Trey enjoy, I think, a very fair amount of creative freedom, but it really just comes down to a judgment call, and like I said, I think history might show we overreacted, but we're willing to live like that. Also, two fun facts. First off, this episode led to controversy with Bill Donahue, the head of the American Catholic League, who said that Matt and Trey were money-hungry and needed to resign over the episode. And his statements led to the episode Fantastic Easter Special, which aired the next year. Second fun fact, Harper's Magazine actually approached Matt and Trey about printing South Park's version of Muhammad and apparently they were gonna go for it, but Comedy Central put their foot down. Instead, when Family Guy shows the image, we got a title card saying, Comedy Central has refused to broadcast an image of Muhammad on their network. Coming, Muhammad. Wow, a salmon helmet, thanks. But this isn't even the biggest fish to fry. Nobody in universe is mad about it. Probably a bit annoyed that they overreacted over nothing, and the only retaliation they get isn't blood or bombs or World War III, but a juvenile short clip produced by terrorists making fun of Jesus and the American flag, which I think is their way of saying, well, how do you like it? But again, no, this isn't the worst of what South Park has done with the concept. I'm talking about the two-parter that's banned everywhere where. The one that I remember never being able to watch growing up, except on pirate websites, which would constantly be taken down and put back up. I present to you the episode 200 and 201. Much like Cartoon Wars, the two-parter has little to do with Muhammad, at first. It's about the celebrities Sal Perk has made fun of throughout the years, led by Tom Cruise, attempting to sue the town for mocking them. Stan, a class action lawsuit means the end of this town. We can't possibly go up against their lawyers. Damn it, Marsh, why couldn't you have just kept your stupid, ugly kid in line? The celebrities say they will avoid litigation if the townsfolk hand over Muhammad, because he's the one person you aren't allowed to criticize. Well, then you can just get sued! Mr. Cruz, if there's anybody else we could try to bring to town, we could- No! Just him! You get Muhammad to appear in South Park, or your little town is done! Which is actually the point. As it turns out, in the South Park universe, Muhammad is immune to criticism because he emits a sacred goo. If you manage to obtain said goo, like Muhammad, you cannot be made fun of, unless you have Seaman on your back, in which case, go ahead, you will be laughed at. Imagine it, Tim. Nobody could rip on you for all the rehash movies you've made lately. There'd never be a TV show that pointed out you haven't had an original thought since Beetlejuice. Of course, the townsfolk don't want to hand him over because Muhammad is still a person and on top of that, a super best friend. And worse yet, the Ginger Kids, now led by Scott Tennerman and based at the airport Hilton, want Muhammad too and threaten to bomb the town unless they comply or take him out of a bear costume. Look, Gingers, you said you wanted We got him for you. We have no way of knowing if is really in there. It could be a trick. Much like Cartoon Wars, the double standard is pointed out. You simply cannot show or talk about Muhammad in any way. But Lao Z and Buddha doing cocaine? That's fair game. Hey, that rhymes. The people get very offended when Muhammad is mocked because he's a religious figure. Buddha, don't do coke in front of kids. 
But that actually got the whole show banned in Sri Lanka, no joke. After the episode aired, well, let's just say there was a lot more acid thrown Matt and Trey's way than usual. Many people liked the episode, but this was probably one of the first times that Matt and Trey had literal death threats flung their way. Perhaps their biggest critic was Revolution Muslim a New York-based organization which advocated for an end to what they called Western imperialism and a return to a Muslim state. In response to the episode, the organization posted a lengthy post, which read, We have to warn Matt and Trey that what they are doing is stupid, and they will probably wind up like Theo Van Gogh for airing this show. This is not a threat, but a warning of the reality of what will likely happen to them. For reference, Theo Van Gogh was a Dutch filmmaker who was well known for his short film, Submission Part 1. He collaborated with, I'm gonna try to say this the best I can, Ian. Percy Ali, a Somali politician who was known for advocating for the rights of Muslim women and for her activities, now has to live under constant security. Submission criticized the way women are abused under fundamentalist Islamic law. The film included the image of a woman's body, with verses of the Quran written on her like a canvas, which seemed to justify the abuse she undergoes. Where is Fio now? He's dead. He was shot in broad daylight by Mohammed Boyeri, an Islamic extremist who also called for the death of Ali, who he considered a kafir. Kofir? I'm gonna say kafir. I'm sorry if I got this wrong. Or a non-believer but it did not stop there. The post included a sermon by an Al-Qaeda leader, calling for the deaths of anybody who makes fun of Muhammad, and a picture of Ali. What made everybody view it as a threat and not a warning was the doxing. They included the addresses to the Comedy Central production offices in Los Angeles and New York City. And for reference, South Park is produced in LA. In Comedy Central, their HQ is in New York. On top of that, they also included the link to a Huffington Post article which gave details on Matt and Trey's homes, short of actually saying where they lived. Eventually, the blog post was tracked down to Zachary Adam Chesser, aka Abu Tala al Ameriki. I'm, I'm so sorry if I got that wrong. And he is currently incarcerated in Hazleton, USP, in Colorado, on a 25 year prison sentence. Wow, talk about irony. On the topic of humor, the website was eventually hacked. If you logged on, you instead got pictures, like Muhammad with a bomb on his head, or an older Muslim kissing a little boy. In the aftermath of this, the decision was made to pull the episode, especially in Comedy Central Netherlands. Their Swedish counterparts released a statement saying, Comedy Central has decided not to air these two episodes of South Park. It is a decision we've made with great reluctance. Comedy Central believes strongly in creative freedom of expression, when unique and deeply insightful creative talents like those behind South Park are able to express themselves freely, we all benefit. However, the safety of our employees is our unquestioned number one priority, and therefore we have decided to take these precautionary measures. How did Matt and Trey react? Well, they weren't bowed by the threats, and they did not feel that they or their families were in danger. So they were very upset that Comedy Central censored it. As a form of protest during the commentary they did for 200 and 201, they refused to call Muhammad by his name, instead calling him the prophet of the Muslim faith. Speaking of, it seemed like Comedy Central's fears were correct, seemed being the key word here. A mere 18 days after 200 aired, the NYPD discovered a car bombing plot near one Astor Plaza, which also houses the Minskoff Theater, which is currently playing the Broadway production of The Lion King. The thing is, my theater kid brain notwithstanding, the building also functions as the headquarters for Viacom. And it's also really nice, I've been there a few times. Emily Guy, I damn you to hell! 
To be fair, the explosion never actually happened. The NYPD discovered smoke and found that, while ignited, the bombs failed to explode, for a variety of reasons I'm not going to get into. Many news outlets believe there was a link between the failed car bombing and the episode's airing, but this was a premature rationalization. In truth, the bombing was planned months in advance, and the perpetrator, Faisal Shahzad, had nothing to do with it. He was preparing for months before the episode aired, and keep in mind, South Park episodes are produced six days before they air, so he had no way of knowing that Matt and Trey were going to make this one episode. In fact, he wasn't even a member of Revolution Muslim. At the time, their leader had an alibi. He was in Times Square with a permit from the NYPD calling for the people to acknowledge Barack Obama, who was president at the time, as a fascist. However, the damage was done. NYPD increased security at Viacom, as even if Revolution Muslim wasn't known to commit any violence and made the point they weren't going to, they were afraid it could inspire other similar attacks. The next episode to air from South Park was 201, which continued the storyline. This time, they had Muhammad appear, albeit with a giant sensor bar over him. Oh, thank God. Hey, Muhammad. Really sorry about all this, dude. And any mention of his name was censored with a bleep. Seriously, the censor job they did with this episode, it kind of reminds me of the criticism I sometimes get for bleeping out my videos. Ah, crap. Boys, you got Santa to be when? When you all said you were going to hand over to Tom Cruise. We promised Jesus that would stay safely in the U-Haul. The worst was the final speeches, which were all censored with really long bleeps. After the characters are finally able to make fun of Tom Cruise once again, Kyle, Santa, and Jesus each make speeches that are completely censored. You see, I learned something today. Don't you see, gingers? Yeah. Now, me and many other people believed this was a joke, especially since it aired on Comedy Central Canada like this. And Comedy Central Canada is well known for airing South Park episodes uncensored. But as it turns out, this wasn't Matt and Trey's doing. Comedy Central censored the final cut at the last minute. However, the uncensored version was eventually found years later on 4chan. And as it turns out, they were actually talking about the controversy. If there's anything we've all learned, it's that terrorizing people works. If you don't want to be made fun of anymore, all you need are guns and bombs to get people to stop. All you need to do is instill fear and be willing to hurt people. Too bad the damage was done. These two episodes, plus Super Best Friends, were either heavily censored and or unavailable for streaming or broadcast in the United States. 200 and 201 are the only episodes to essentially be banned outright. In fact, on the South Park website, if you try to pull up the episode, you'll instead get a wall of text which says, We apologize that South Park Studios cannot stream episode 201 at this time. After we delivered the show and prior to broadcast, Comedy Central plays numerous additional audio bleeps throughout the episode. We do not have network approval to stream our original version of the show. We will bring you a version of 201 as soon as we can. But in a weird way, by avoiding the backlash, Comedy Central still got tons of it. Margaret Went of The Globe and Mail wrote, The real culprits here are not Muslims, but the cowards of Comedy Central. We no longer need a genuine terrorist threat to scare us into submission. We're quite capable of doing it ourselves. Caving in has almost become a cultural reflex. In terms of support, 12 Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonists, including Gary Trudeau, signed a petition of support, saying, we, the undersigned, condemn the recent frets against the creators of Sal Park, Matt Stone and Trey Parker, by the extremist organization Muslim Revolution. Freedom of expression is a universal right, and we reject any group that seeks to silence people by violence or intimidation. In the United States, we have a proud tradition of political satire and believe in the right to speak or draw freely without censorship. 
What's interesting is, despite this, much of the support they got wasn't other people following them or their lead. It was simply them praising the creators and advocating for censorship and not doing much else. Like if you see a current events thing on Twitter and instead of, say, donating or something like that or getting involved, you just share it or like it. Almost as if they were afraid of their own safety. Heck, this also inspired a holiday of sorts called Everybody Draw Muhammad Day later that year. Seattle cartoonist Molly Norris created the holiday, which was to occur on May 20th. The idea would go that if enough people drew Muhammad, that their frets would no longer work because they couldn't kill them all. Molly herself said this was always a drawing about rights, never meant to disrespect religion. Alas, if we don't have rights, we will not be able to practice the religion of our choice. None of these little characters are the likeness of Muhammad. They are just claiming to be. I, the cartoonist, never launched a Draw Muhammad Day. It is in this fictional poster, sponsored by this fictional group, referring to the Citizens Against Citizens Against Humor wording in the cartoon, satire about a current event, people. That's what cartoonists do. Cute idea, right? I mean, it got 100,000 members of support on Facebook. Well, they got counter support with a page called Against Every Everybody Draw Muhammad Day, which got just as many followers, and Facebook itself actually got temporarily banned in Pakistan. And that's not even talking about what happened to Molly herself. While Matt and Trey did not fear for their lives, Molly actually had reason to. Al-Qaeda put her on a hit list, saying, the medicine prescribed by the Messenger of Allah is the execution of those involved. The large number of participants makes it easier for us because there are more targets to choose from in addition to the difficulty of the government offering all of them special protection. But even then, our campaign should not be limited to only those who are active participants. Heck, Molly herself is under FBI protection and has had to change her name quit her job and go into hiding. At least with Matt and Trey, I guess it's because they had the money and the notoriety to afford to keep their safety if anything were to happen. Molly did not have that. Still, I for one do not fear for my life. Let me make it clear, I am not making this video to blaspheme, I am instead making it to simply educate on what used to be a current event, and to apologize for my earlier statements. I am sorry if I meant anybody any harm, and I will continue to educate myself and make this channel a place for everybody. In Comedy Central, it's about time you reinstate those episodes. It's been over 10 years. Thank you for 100,000 subscribers. Goodbye. Hmm. What? What do you mean by hmm? Why did it take you like a year to make this video again? I told you. Research. And plus, I was finishing up with college. Could have been earlier. Catherine, at least be glad I did not use a ukulele. And you know I know how to play one.